Let me tell you the tale of the plywood lathe. I was in my shop one day, you know, working hard like I normally do, when all of a sudden I heard a car pull in my driveway. Well, who should it be but none other than my good friend Eric Curtis. Now, Eric Curtis is a full-time school teacher, but he also makes some pretty amazing stuff out of wood. You can check out his YouTube channel by clicking that little card in the upper right-hand corner. I was telling him how I was about to start building this table with this really long circular piece on the bottom, and I had a pretty crazy idea on how I was going to make that circular piece. This is how the conversation went. I was like, we got a square, and we need to figure out how to make it round. Hmm, I see. What about the lathe? No, dude, it's really long. It's not going to fit on the lathe. Oh yeah, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about that. But wait, I got an idea. What if we have this thing that we can turn to spin the stock? Oh, you mean this thing that we can turn to spin the stock? Kind of like our own lathe, yeah. And then we have a router on top, like do 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 you know, to cut it as it turns. You literally just blew my mind. Let's do this. <laughs> so after laying out my plan to Eric, we had our idea. It was basically going to be a long router sled where the stock hung freely underneath and could spin around while the router moved across the top. Kind of like a router sled lathe combo. So the first thing we did was cut down all our sheets of plywood. Next, we wanted to figure out a way that the router could be actually locked into the sled portion so it wouldn't tip, you know, forward or backwards. So we added a long dadoed groove uh, along the sides of our router sled piece. You can see here, once it kind of loosely gets put together, that that dadoed groove sits just above our base plate so that the plate of our router can slide smoothly in there. But in order for it to slide smoothly, we decided to lube it up with just a crazy amount of paste wax, you know, so that it would slide nice and easy. Then Eric danced awkwardly a little bit, and we used glue and some brad nails just to kind of tack the whole thing together. As we went along, we slid the plate from our router in there just to make sure that it wasn't getting pinched anywhere along the way and would, you know, move freely once we got it all together. Just like this, just smooth as a baby's bottom. Next, we had to raise our router sled up to create a space for the stock to float underneath. So we just added a few, you know, plywood braces onto each side to create some support. And then after that, we hooked them onto our base plate, creating a nice box underneath where we could mount our stock and spin it while the router rode above. In order to make our stock spin, we decided to cut some threaded rod, 3 8 inch thick, to mount at one end, and we cut some quarter inch steel rod to put at the other end. The quarter inch steel rod will just spin freely within the confines of the jig, while the threaded rod will go into the stock and hook securely. That way when we spin the threaded rod, it will, you know, make the whole piece of stock spin around. So we drilled the corresponding sized holes in both ends of our box. And then for some reason, I thought it would be really fun to do a hand crank so that you had to manually turn the stock. Um, probably not the most efficient idea, but there's just something about a hand crank on a jig that seemed really medieval and cool. So I cut it out on my bandsaw, and then I took it over to the belt sander just to smooth it out and make it look pretty. Then I drilled a hole in each end of the hand crank, one for the threaded rod to go through, and then I stole this little handle off my lathe so that, you know, I could spin it around nice and easy. Then we hooked one end onto our sled and mounted our little hand crank. As you can see, it's attached to that threaded rod, which will be inside the stock. Next, we put the router inside the sled and we had to cut a groove down the middle of our sled so that our router bit could pass through and interact with the stock below. Speaking of stock, before we started this whole process, we glued together two pieces of 8 quarter white oak. 
So now that the glue was dry, we took them out of clamps and started milling it up to make sure that we had a perfectly square block that we could start with. Now, in hindsight, we probably could have cut this thing down to like an octagon on the table saw before we really got going, but we wanted to go from square to circle because we were ambitious. So I used a self-centering doweling jig to drill our holes in each end of the stock and then it was time to mount it inside of our jig. So I seated the quarter inch steel rod on one side and then we just cranked in that threaded rod on the other side until it was nice and snug inside that stock. Then I had to move the router out of the way and voila, our hand crank spun our stock. We were both pretty excited about it. And that's when I had a dumb idea. Whoa, 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 whoa. What if, as the router moves along, it was pulled by a string as you turn the crank, huh? Hmm. Okay. This is an interesting idea. I don't know if it'll work, though. No, dude, it'll totally work. Come on. So, in a flash of creative stupidity, we started cutting out a bunch of circles to make little wheels and pulleys. The idea was that we were going to have one wheel that went into the stock, and then another larger wheel. Now, the smaller wheel on the stock would turn a belt that would then turn the larger wheel. The larger wheel would have the quarter inch steel rod sticking out that would catch a piece of string that was attached to the router. So as the bigger wheel turned, it would actually pull the router along the top of the sled, making our job easy because we just have to stand at one end and, you know, crank the handle as the string pulled the router along, looking something like this. Now, this is all great in theory. We thought, huh, there's no way this could possibly fail. We're geniuses. We're going to get awards for this. People will scream our names from the rooftop as we come marching along. Here goes the great woodworking jig inventor people. Well, I wish I had a close-up of just how badly this failed. You see, the problem was that the string just wasn't, you know, taut enough. And then we had some issues with the string wrapping around the quarter inch rod. And anyways, long story short, we kind of epically failed at this one. We decided that with more time, we could have made it work with counter tension both on the back and front of the router, maybe with some sort of bike chain. But we gave up that idea and we went back to our initial idea of Eric just turning the crank and me slowly working the router along the top. And guess what? It worked. In fact, it worked amazingly. But you know what didn't work amazingly? Eric's biceps. Because pretty soon he was like, man, I'm, I'm getting tired of turning this thing with my hands. Can't we do something else? So we decided to abandon the hand crank idea and replace it with a drill. And then Eric got even more lazy and decided that standing was a little too much work for him. So he just sat down. So literally, he used his fingers to pull a trigger while I did all the work moving the router over the top of the stock. And slowly but surely, we started making that thing round. And then Eric had to go back home. So I replaced him with a block of wood and a clamp. That's how little I needed him at this point. He could literally be replaced with a clamp and a block of wood. And with Eric gone, I just continued to make shallow passes across the piece of stock. And sure enough, eventually I was able to turn a perfectly round 84 inch piece. It worked exactly like a lathe, just a, a lathe with a router on top. I even sanded the entire piece just like I would on the lathe, spinning and just holding some sandpaper against the stock, and it worked great. Was it the most efficient way to make this piece? Uh, maybe not. Was it the smartest way? Probably not. Was it the best way? No. No, probably not. But two boys had a dream, to make a lathe out of plywood, and we accomplished that dream. Thanks for watching.